But joining me now is the, one of the men that's going to be the opening fight main card ESPN Plus here in my hometown, Tampa. Usually we're on Skype talking, but it's good to have you in hometown, Eric Anders. Man, Eric, man, how's it going, man? Man, it's good, man. I didn't know this was your house, man. I didn't, I didn't know that you were from Tampa, man. It's a nice spot, man. I'm loving it here. Yeah, literally, I live... 10, 15 minutes from here? Really? Yeah, so when nice. Ed's like, oh, this is where he's staying, I'm like, oh, man, it's like right by the house. Yeah, you know? it's, 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 uh, man, it's a beautiful city, man. You know, uh, it's a little wet, you know? It, it's, uh, it seems like they get that Florida 3 o'clock <laughs> rain shower every day. But, uh, you know, it's Florida, so, you know, paradise. You're kind of used to an Alabama, though. Man, you know, Alabama, uh, you know, it rains. When it rains, it pours. Like, it's like a torrential downpour. Poor. We don't get like that daily sprinkle, uh -huh. you know, that y'all get here. So, you know, uh, when it rains in, in Alabama, it it, uh, it rains. I mean, we're talking. It's Wednesday afternoon here. We're less than 48 hours from you weighing in. Like, and we always, you know, I think outside looking, we're like, okay, everything that's going on is just about the weight cut. Is that true or is there other things going on? Uh, for me, you know, that, that's uh, – not the main thing that I'm concentrated on, but obviously it's uh, the first, you know, it's uh, that has to happen first before before the fight happens. So uh, it is a main focus. This is probably the best my weight has ever been, uh, the leanest I've ever been uh, before a fight. Uh, so, man, I'm feeling good. Just got done working out, feeling great, uh, fast, explosive, uh, reacting really well. So, um, man, so far this, this is the easiest weight cut that I've had. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised where my weight's at now considering how much I drink and eat, uh, have drank and eaten uh, today. Any reason why you're, you're leaner this time? I mean, was there any changes? Man, you know, I've been fighting at 205, uh, and I was, you know, not nervous, but, you know, I, I kind of had a conversation with myself. that like, man, you put on a lot of muscle for, you know, to fight at 205, so this weight cut might not – be the easiest thing, you know, but uh, I think, you know, with the more muscle, the more water it holds. So, man, the water is just pouring out, and, uh, man, I couldn't be happier with my weight right now. I was watching an interview with James Lynch, and you kind of alluded to this fact of, like, you know, you've been going back and forth between 85 and 205, and you're at this point of, like, look, I've got to, you know, where am I going to make my title run? Was it, was it a conversation you and Chris had had that said, you know, 85 is where we need to be? Man, you know, it just, uh, yeah, yeah, me, Jason, uh, Jason House, and uh, my head coach, Chris. You know, if, if you watch my middleweight fights compared to, uh, you know, the, the light heavyweight fights, every time I hit one of these guys at middleweight, you know, they either go flying across the cage or end up on their back. You know, the same can't be said for, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the light heavyweights. Well, you know, I fought Chiago and... Uh, you know, hit him quite a bit, and, uh, you know, he was still there. Uh, didn't really do much against Roundtree, and, uh, you know, obviously what I did against um, uh, Venetius in my last fight. I, I just think uh, for where my skill set is at right now, middleweight is the uh, spot for me to be at. It's been a while since that Tiago fight. Is there a part of you that now looks it back and then the way he performed against John Jones of, like, now you look back at that fight and say, man, Man, you know, that's how well he did against John. You know, I, I think that, like, styles make matchups, you know. So just because he did so well against John Jones on one leg doesn't mean that I would, you know, uh, have the same success against John Jones, if, 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 uh, if that makes sense. So, man, he's a hell of a fighter, man. Been around a long time, got a lot of experience. So I think that he fought John Jones at the right time in his career. Uh, you know, it sucks that he, he got hurt. You know, in the fight, but you know it's a fight and things happen. So, um, I will say I think that outside of John Jones, his other light heavyweight fights, I think that him and I had the most entertaining fight. Uh, so I do think that I, I you know, I would do well uh, at light heavyweight, and I'm very open to fighting. Uh, man, you guys know me, man. I'm down to fight whoever, whenever, at whatever weight class. So, um, you know. Whatever name comes across the contract is, you know, I'm going to sign it and we're going we're gonna to meet up and do the damn thing. Obviously, you, you know, throughout your athletic career, you have seen leg injuries, knee injuries. I get to see it, you know, traveling with Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, I see guys coming out of that locker room, you know, Hobby. and, and look, there's, you, you see things. You, yeah, and yeah. you can see kind of the battle in May and knowing what it takes to be at this level. When you look at Tiago being on essentially one leg, like, can you even fathom how he did that? Man, you know, there's a, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline and a lot of things to block pain uh, when you're in the middle of a fight, man. And you know what I think is 
the most amazing thing about it is, is usually that stuff wears off as the, as the fight goes on. Like you see guys get the adrenaline dump, you know, they come out fast, hard, and they get tired two minutes into the fight. So, you know, when the fight first starts, you know, you kind of understand, like, you know, that fight or flight response is kicking in, going real hard, but, you know, he did that in the first round and then fought four more rounds like that. So I don't know how much pain he was in when he was fighting, but I would have to imagine an ACL injury is, uh, you know, I think he tore a lot of stuff in his knee, you know, a couple ligaments and tendons. So, man, I think that, um, you know, he's a tough guy, you know, he's got a great story. And uh, man, I think he really wanted that, that, uh, that belt. So, you know, he was able to fight through it. We had a guy on Sunday break his arm in the game and still play offensive lineman. Oof, man, you know, you always hear stories like that. He's like, em Emmett Smith played with a broken leg, and this guy played with a broken neck, and this is a man. You just be like, man, whatever, man, that's bull. Is that just adrenaline? Is that the best way to describe it? Um, man, I, no, because at first, yes, but that stuff wears off after, you know, a few minutes. You know, to play uh, 60 minutes of a game, of a, you know, Football games last three or four hours, so they, I don't know when he broke his arm in the game. but Second quarter, apparently. Yeah, so he played an hour and a half to two hours and of guard. football. Yeah, an offensive line where you have to, like, yeah. jam people and use your hands. So, man, you know, um, I think the human body is just one of the most remarkable things on earth, and you can really do anything that you want with your body under a lot of different circumstances uh, if you have, like, the right mental uh, – if you're in the right mental state. I was thinking about this fight you have on Saturday against Gerald Merchard, and obviously people think of his grappling aspects. It made me think about when we started talking, you are an amateur, and I remember I had this stock photo of you at a <laughs> jiu-jitsu competition. Is this finally the fight where we could see the jiu-jitsu come out of you? Man, you know, I'm a brown belt, purple belt world champion, uh, so, you know, I don't, I'm not scared of anybody on the ground, you know? Um, that's just not why I prefer the fight to take place. Uh, but if I do find myself on my back, if I do find myself on top, up against the cage, I am more than confident in my ability to either get back to my feet or sink in a submission of myself. Obviously, we have talked about the various camps. You have gone to the Cross Train at Factory X, obviously your home gym there in Alabama, but you went down the Fortis. Was this something that kind of, you know, you just kind of saw what they were doing and you kind of wanted to see what they offered? and? And how it can maybe expand your game? Man, you know, Coach Safe is a really good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I fought on some cars with him and got to know the fighters. And, you know, uh, man, just decided to take a trip down there. And, you know, it's like a nine-hour drive, which for me, that's, you know, that's nothing. So I just got on 20 West and, uh, you know, went to the gym. Loved the way they train, loved the coaching. And the room, the talent in the room, it's, you know, I think he's got like 16 guys in the UFC or some phenomenal yeah. number like that. Um, you know, so I got to work with, you know, bigger, stronger, more athletic guys like Uriah Hall, Ryan Spann, who's also fighting this weekend, Monzo Manafield, um, a bunch of people got to watch Miles John, uh, My Miles Johns uh, get ready for his fight in Canada, Chris Peterson, or Stephen Pe Steven Peterson. Steven Peterson get ready for his fight in Mexico, uh, which he probably got, you know, knock out of the year with that, you know, that spinning back fist. Or, uh, it's certainly in contention. So, man, you know, it's uh, man, it was an awesome atmosphere, and everybody was truly there to help everybody get better. I mean, I think the record in, like, last year or so, 15-5 and five in the UFC. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a crazy number. And he is one of the realest coaches. I think yeah. I've seen on fight night because I was listening to Josh Thompson's podcast and he, and he was talking about in corners. He goes, I had various corner men, but there was always one constant and that was Bob Cook. He goes, because Bob was a straight shooter. You come back after a round, you'd be like, yeah, won that round. Eh, you may not have won that round. And he talked about a uh, fight against he had against Gill mm -hmm. where he said, Bob looks at me and start at the end of the fourth and goes, you got to knock him out. You're losing. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but that's, I mean, but those are the type of people you got to have in your corner. Yeah, yeah. Man, that, uh, you know, I think the corner, obviously every fighter is different, right? Kose is probably not a match for every fighter, right? But the fighters he is a match for, the thing I look for in a corner, man, is, is honesty. And, you know, not necessarily like, because, you know, I, I hear other people corners like, you know, kick, 
punch, you know, left hand, right hand, jab, cross. It's like it's not about like one. He hears you saying that my opponent, your opponent hears you. But when you know when you come back to the corner, you know, I, I want my corner to tell me what that guy's doing. Oh, his hands are low, or you know, he's doing this. Some things that I may not necessarily pick up on or or, or see. Or just little minuscule things. So when I get back to the corner, hey, he's dropping his hand after his jab. Hey, he's doing this. You know, I've trained. You know, I, I know what I'm doing. I know, you know, what to do, kind of thing. So uh, just give me the little cues. You know, so uh, that's why me and uh, Chris work so well together. Just because you know he's not. He's like he's kind of like safe, but a little more mellow. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not. He doesn't yell, but he's brutally honest. Lets me know what's up, and. Uh, where I'm at in the fight, and uh, you know, I had to go out there and get wins. Of course, uh, you know, you got Gerald here. If you had to outline one thing, key to victory, there's, is there one particular thing you go, I have to do this to win? Don't get choked. <laughs> I, th I think, you know, because, man, the, the, the remarkable thing about Gerald and the thing that, you know, you just can't, you know, it speaks volumes of him is that no matter how the fight's going for him, where he's getting, getting you know, beat up or he's winning the fight. As long as there's time left on the clock, you're at risk of getting choked. So I think, you know, most of his submissions uh, have come by choke. You know, he just beat Trevin Giles, probably losing the fight. Last few seconds of the fight wraps up a choke. And the thing is, you know, you catch him catching people with these chokes and they're doing the right thing. You know, um, Trevin Giles had his head on a, you know, inside on a single leg and still got choked out. You know, so he kind of lures people into the grappling game and then he just kind of pounces. Uh, and that's just not a game that I'm going to play with him. I mean, obviously, both of you fought for Valor fights. I don't think it was on the same card, though, right? No, I think. Uh, it was in the same time range, though, Same right? time. I think I fought. I, I remember um, I was trying to fight a dude named Sid Wheeler. Yeah. And yes. uh, they gave him the fight. And uh, he ended up choking out Sid Wheeler. And I was like, man, who the hell is Gerald Mershart. <laughs> or, and, you know, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure, like, everybody struggles with his name at first. I was yeah, like, what yeah. the, f you know, who is this guy? Uh, so that's the first time he popped up on my radar. And then either the fight after or, the, you know, soon after that, he got signed. And then I got signed, uh, you know, a few months later, I believe. So, you know, uh, I've known who he is and, you know, what he's about for quite some time now. Obviously, we know you're a world traveler. You and the wife got any plans uh, after this fight's over? Yeah, she's competing in Latvia. Uh, you know, okay. she she does the uh, bodybuilding fitness model yeah. uh, thing, and she's got a competition in Latvia at the beginning of November. Super excited to go to Latvia. Uh, not in November, though. I'm <laughs> sure it's going to be cold. You know, it's, uh, it's close to Russia. Everybody who's tried to invade Russia past September has literally frozen <laughs> to death. Napoleon, Alexander the Great. So I'm sure it's going to be bitter cold. First stop when I get off the plane is to go to a jacket store. I feel like, you know, over there, or not even, like even in Chicago, you have to have a jacket from there for it to be warm, you know. Uh -huh. So but I'm sure it'll be a good time, man, you know. I won't be cutting weight or, you know, doing any of that. So I'll get to try all the food and, you know, beers and stuff that they have to offer. I think I have one big coat just because of, of traveling around the NFL. Sure. You know, you know if you're going to a cold weather game. Because I always tell people, what we're saying is once your feet gets cold, you're screwed. It's over with. It's a wrap. And I just imagine uh, we went to Croatia in the summertime. Beautiful, beautiful uh, country. And uh, hot, you know, uh, humid so i imagine imagine they have that damp air that wet that wet cold which is you know beyond miserable so uh man super excited to go see that part of the world and uh you know have a new experience of course we look forward to seeing your fight i don't think i can watch your fight live uh, you'll be in uh we're London. five hours ahead so that's like 1 a.m.? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I don't might, know if I'm getting up that, I'm get, getting that late. <laughs> get, get the coffee ready. Well, you'll be up all day with the Yeah, I, I, was, with thinking, the NFL, I was thinking so about this. Is like, I'm like, okay, dude, can you get ESPN Plus internationally? On the, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Pandora I, my, my, doesn't my work in other countries. My backup plan is have it loaded up on the computer on the flight back on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's uh, probably the next best thing, although I'm sure – you have seen all the results and stuff. See, that doesn't the, that doesn't affect me. Yeah, yeah. It's more of like, like you know, obviously during football season, I don't get to watch a lot of this stuff live. I'll I'll just put a tweet out there, say, hey, what were the great fights? 
So I know, and, yeah. and people will like say, stay away from this one. Now watch this one. Like, I was watching um, the Larkin Koreshkov fight in Bellator last week. Anyone yeah, yeah. who's not seen that fight, amazing fight. Mm-hmm. Just two guys going to war. You know, just it, Larkin won, right? Yeah, he won a yeah. split, uh, split decision. He uh, Kreskov got him pretty good in the first round, but yeah. he came back stormed in the second round. Yeah, yeah. nearly finished the fight. Man, dude. that dude's good, man. You know, that guy used to fight at heavyweight. Now he fights at. Uh, you know, welterweight. So yeah, no. he's like one of those Jared Cantonier guys who's probably uh, naturally a bigger guy or was a bigger guy and then probably got serious about his diet and cardio yeah. and stuff and started dieting down. And I, mean, I think that's probably the best move for, for those two guys. I mean, look at Rumble now. Uh, but man, he was probably a heavyweight to begin with, man. You know? I, it's still amazing to me he made 170. Man, me too. I, uh, man, he, he said something about, or he, he put a throwback Thursday picture on a. Uh, on uh, on Instagram of him weighing in at 170, and I was like, dog, he's got to be 250 now. He, oh. And I was like. I would say at least 250. I was like, man. Because there's no way he how, can make 205. No way. How did you do that? How, how, how? Yeah. Um, but, you know, apparently he went through, you know, he, he, you know, I think back then, you know, people were just still sitting in the sauna for, you know, four or five hours to make weight and sweat and, you know, really put themselves through it. I think now, uh, with all the science and research and and stuff that's going into to weight cutting and performance and stuff, that man, he would have been a 205er the whole time, 85 minimum. Did you? You know, obviously, you played football growing up. Did you ever cut weight to make weight for like pee wee football? Nah, nah, I, man. I, I was super thin until uh, I hit puberty. Man, I've been this height, six one, six two. Since I was like 13, but I wrestled at like 169 or 170 or something. Okay. So, and I didn't cut any weight for that. So, you know, I, I was a super thin. Uh, I would say lean. You know, I went like all bony and scrawny and stuff. I still had a little bit of muscle tone, but once I hit puberty, I stopped growing up and started growing out. Final thing, you you uh, waiting for LSU to come on the schedule? Oh, man, you know, man, uh, I I just love the way both teams are playing, man. You know, LSU kind of does, you know, up and down over the years. But, man, they look really solid this year. And, man, the thing I'm looking to the most is not only that game, is how the season shapes up at the end because, man, I don't think they're ever going to, again, going to let two teams from the same conference play in in uh, in the playoffs, let alone a championship game. So, uh, I just want to see how that works out. Four of the top six teams on the SEC right now? If Florida goes out and beats LSU on Saturday, they're a top five team. Ah, uh, man. I don't, I don't think they will. Nah, the way they played against who they play last Auburn. week? Auburn. The way they If Auburn they, can't run the ball, they're not good. Yeah, well, man, they had a lot of miscues. It was a sloppy game. They did edge out a win, uh, which at the end of the day is, is the ultimate goal. But man, you have to play solid football, fundamental football against Bama. So if they go out there and play, um, and LSU's probably on the same level. Uh, so if they go out there and have all those miscues and turnovers and stuff and sloppy play, LSU's going to run away with it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun time of the year. It's a fun time of the it year, is. of course. Uh, I'm really looking to see where uh, how Oklahoma does because I'd, I'd like to see Jalen Hurts and Alabama. And, uh, that'd be crazy. In, in the championship. and He's a different player. Man, he's um, – He's clicking on all cylinders, and man, in my opinion, he's leading the Heisman race. Uh, he would get my vote for the Heisman right now, just because you know, Tua, top three offensive line in the nation, certainly without yeah. a doubt, the number one receiving core in the in, in the nation. You know, so uh, I gotta give it to Tua, or excuse me, uh, Jalen Hurts right now. But you know, it's a long season. Well, I guess they're halfway through now, so. We'll see how the rest of the season shapes up. Yeah, I think this week is will mark the halfway season for me for the NFL season. I think this week's week nine or ten. Wow, twenty man. When you, when you put it in the preseason game. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, yeah, man. That's, but that's still a lot, man. You know, that's a lot of wear and tear, a lot of games. Uh, think about on this. The body. Okay. Last time we played a home game in Tampa, September twenty second. Our next home game is November tenth. No off weeks. We have one bye week. Oof. So we, we started no, gone, two weeks two, ago in months. L.A., New Orleans last week, London now, bye week, Nashville, Seattle. 
And, it, and them road games, man, you know, those guys are living out of a hotel and, you know, traveling. That's a long flight from, you know, London to... Seven, it's like seven, seven, seven and a half hours. Yeah, like it's a, yeah we take off going. here Thursday night, land Friday morning in London. And then play on Saturday and then get on the plane yeah, the Saturday key, Yeah, night. the key is... Or yeah. Sunday night or Sunday, Sunday morning. Right after the game, we'll get on the plane, oh, yeah, head back. On Sunday, that's right, we'll, that's right. Yeah, we'll be back early Monday morning. Um, just but, to play again on Saturday, man. It's it's uh, but you know the NFL, man. You know it's a little bit different, man. They like their practices. Uh, it's it's not like like a college practice. You know they do a lot of like um, like walkthroughs. Uh, you know I don't think they do a whole lot of hitting in no, practice. No, no, no. So you know they they may be a little banged up for the game, but they'll have some time to recover and, and get their feet. Thursday back. games, man. Yeah. Could you imagine playing Sunday and th- uh, Thursday? Especially from in the trenches, guy. We, um, I think, I'm pretty sure we played on Thanksgiving Day in 2009. So we had played that Saturday, and then so obviously we got an extra day. But at the end of the day, man, that's, that's that one day's a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's for a big sure. thing. I yeah. bet, I bet. But Eric, man, as always, man, I appreciate time. Of course, I don't know this all social media and. Uh, of course, those sponsors that are helping me out, man. Yeah, you guys can find me anywhere, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Eric Anders, E-R-Y-K-A-N-D-E-R-S. Uh, big shout-out to Infinite CBD, uh, EW Motion Therapy, and uh, Rev Gear for you know keeping things moving, injury-free, and uh, supplying me with the best gear.